<laughs> so, I'm going to, you guys, you guys are going to help me today, all right? Okay. All right. You always help. So, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus once again. We thank you for this opportunity you've allowed us to be here today. And we ask your blessings upon this service and each one in attendance. We pray, Lord, that our ears are open to hear the voice of your Holy Spirit. And our hearts are ready to receive what he has for us. As you said in your word, he who hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So God bless them. And those who are not here, we pray that you continue to keep your hand upon them. Protect them, Lord. Lead them and guide them by your spirit. And we'll thank you for it, Christ. Amen. 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 If you have a Bible, still one, two, or someone, I want you to turn to Acts chapter 19. And I want someone to read verses 1 through, oh, 1 through 3, and then someone 4 through 6. And then someone turn to 1 John chapter 4, and just read verse 1, I believe it is. Acts 19, 1 to 3? Yes. And it came to pass that while a Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost, and you believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what, unto what them were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. All right. If someone read verse 4 through 6. Then said Paul, John narrowly baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And someone, first John chapter 14, verse Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because every false prophet are going out into the world. Many false prophets. Amen. So I would like to speak to you today using these two verses, these passages of scriptures, as well as others. And I want to speak to you about the devil's best kept secret. Amen. Yeah. The devil's best kept secret. In Acts chapter 19, well, first before we even go to Acts chapter 19. So, Pastor Red. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. And in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, the writer John, the beloved, the beloved disciple, same writer of the gospel of Jesus according to John, he writes there, and he also gives us a discourse on love as well, at following in verse 7 or so. But first, he says, try the Spirit. Isn't that an interesting way to start off a chapter? Mm -hmm. Try the spirits. Mm -hmm. Because John realized, as well as many of the other disciples who followed Jesus when he was physically here on his first advent, as we shared, how that th there are a lot of spirits. Mm -hmm. A lot of different spirits, and the Bible tells us about these different spirits. So we're, we're as Christians, we're not to be naive or ignorant that there are many different spirits that, as the Bible shares there in 1 John chapter 4, and these spirits are anti-Christ. Mm. They're anti-Jesus. Yes. They're anti-righteousness. They're, they're anti-holiness. Mm. They're anti-God. It's not just when you hear anti-Christ, it's not just this individual man anti-Christ, but John said, and these spirits are anti-Christ. They're, they're, they're anti-Jesus. They, they represent everything outside of Jesus. So John says, try these spirits. And basically he's saying, they're around you. They're operating in the world that you're living in. So try them. Don't just believe them. Yes. Test them. Put Come them to the now. test. Come on. Do they confess that Jesus came in the flesh and went on to say, 
So he lets us know that there are many different spirits, and the Bible tells us there's a spirit of deception, spirit of lying. The Bible says, Paul wrote to Timothy, how that there's a spirit of fear. And all these different spirits, and I'll get to this in a little bit, in Romans chapter 8, he says God has given us the spirit of bondage. Yes. So we have all these different spirits, right? But he says, try the spirits, whether they be of God. So I just wanted to bring that out to you. And now we're going to go to Acts chapter 19. And if, if you like, I'm going to get to this in a, in a bit. Romans chapter 8, you can open your Bibles, put a place mark or whatever. That's where we're going to be talking about. Or we're going to be in that chapter. So in Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19 is the prelude to the book of Ephesians. So we have the book of Ephesians. And Acts chapter 19 introduces us to Ephesians and why the Apostle Paul was writing and saying a lot of things that he said in the book of Ephesians. So we'll get to a little bit of that here. So in Acts chapter 19, the Bible tells us, and I'll just kind of summarize it in the narrative here, that Apollos was there in Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Now Ephesus is a... Um, a port city, mm -hmm. a port city that what's in now today we know it as Turkey. It was called Asia Minor back then. Mm -hmm. So Paul went into Ephesus. And notice in the Bible reading, as he went into Ephesus, he looked at the disciples. He, he found that there were disciples, and we know what disciples are. Disciples are followers of Jesus, right? Yes. Those who follow Jesus. So these individuals, it, it was already evident that they loved God. They were following Jesus. They had been exposed to the gospel to a, to a certain degree. Um, and that which they had been exposed to, they were obeying. They were following, just like us today. We have church, we have Sunday school, we have Bible study, we have fellowship, so that we can broaden our exposure to the Bible. Amen. Because we can only live what we've been exposed to. Now, right? yeah, yeah. We can only live and obey that which been that which has been revealed to us. Uh -huh. All right. So Paul goes into Ephesus and he finds these certain disciples, the Bible says. And he finds these disciples and he noticed that something, something is missing. Something critical is missing that they're going to need in their lives for the environment that they live in, for the atmosphere that they're exposed to every day. So Paul asked the question as was read. He said, have ye, have you received the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit? I'll interchange those two words. Have you received the Holy Spirit the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, we know that to be true as we are believers of the Trinity, God the Father, mm -hmm. God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He says, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? So he wasn't questioning that they were disciples. He wasn't questioning their love for God. But Paul being the man of God that he was, and God leading him and directing him to Ephesus, realized you're going to need more than the basics, the foundation. Mm -hmm. The basics and the foundation is good. Yes. But you have to build on the foundation. Yes. You have to build on the basics. Mm -hmm. So he asked them the question, have you received Letting us know that the Holy Spirit is available. Yes. <laughs> Have you received this gift of God mm. since you believed? Have you received the third person of the Godhead, the power of the church collectively and the power in the church individually? Have you received the Holy Spirit which the prophet Joel prophesied in Joel chapter 2, verse 28.
have you received this, this spirit that John the Baptist made reference to in Matthew chapter 3? How that he said, There cometh one after me whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost and with fire. Have you received the spirit that Jesus referenced in John chapter 7? Where Jesus says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. Chapter 7, verse 39. This spake he of the Holy Spirit, which had not yet been given, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Mm -hmm. But he was preparing them. Yes. John, or Paul went on, this spirit he's referring to that Jesus told them in Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Jesus says, tarry. In the city of Jerusalem, wait until you be endued or clothed with power from on high. Yes. Don't start the ministry until you receive this Holy Spirit power mm -hmm. and fire that you will need in this world you live in. Mm -hmm. So Paul was asking them this question. Now let me give you a little background on the, the town Ephesus. Ephesus, as you read that chapter, Ephesus had witches and warlocks. So they had all these different spirits operating in this area. That's why I had uh, I wanted uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 read. Because we can see it in Acts chapter 19. They had all these witches, all these warlocks, all this black magic, all these things, all these anti-Christ things going on. And yet, God had representatives there. Yet, there were disciples in the midst of this dark world. There was light. There was light. But in the midst of a dark world, as we see this handle, it's lit, right? Yes. It needs this, this wick and this, this um, wax. wax and wit. Yes. It needs that fuel yes. to keep burning. Yes. And basically Paul was telling them that you're Christians, mm -hmm. you're believers, you're disciples, but the environment that you're living in, you're going to need some wax, you're going to need a witch, you're going to need fuel to keep the fire burning. Yes. With all these spirits operating around you, mm. have you received the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Have you received the Holy Spirit? The devil's best kept secret. Mm. The Holy Spirit, they weren't a threat being Christians only. Right. Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. They weren't a threat just believing in God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. They weren't a threat just being disciples, but now, Paul was saying, you receive the Spirit. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Not only will the Holy Spirit will transform your life, but He will light a fire in you. Yeah. A fire that burns so hot. A fire to where that it can be extinguished mm -hmm. by the spirits of this world. Mm -hmm. it, not only will it not be able to be extinguished, but this fire will influence others. Yeah. This fire will burn out chaff, burn out sin, yeah. but this fire will also cre create an excitement. Yeah. It will create a joy uh, in the hearts of others. Let me give you an example. If there was a fire on the next street over, mm -hmm. we don't see anyone outside. If there was a fire, you know how many people would run out of their house? They have to put up yellow tape to keep people away from the fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you would think it's a fire, don't go near the fire. Right. But they have to put up yellow caution tape to say stay away from the fire. Uh -huh. Because fire attracts. Yes. Right? Yes. So Paul is saying to them, uh, with this fire of God, the Holy Spirit, uh, you're going to attract people, uh, not just to yourselves, uh, you're going to attract people uh, to the Jesus that's in you. Uh, and the devil said in so many words, uh, this is my secret. They can stand Ephesus. They can be disciples, but I don't want them to influence those witches. I don't want them to influence those warlocks. Uh, and let me just fast forward, then I'll get to some other meat. 
Fast forward in the book of Acts chapter 19. Uh, they received, as was, as was read, they received, they were baptized uh, in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Ghost. And what happened? Uh, revival happened. Uh, to make a long story short, those witches and those warlocks, they came to Jesus. Uh, they started throwing all their sorcery books. Uh, they had a huge bonfire. Uh, why? Because uh, the Holy Spirit was greater uh, than the spirit yeah. they were operating yeah. and the spirit that was influencing them. Uh, it was a greater spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit. Yes. So the Holy Spirit was the devil's best kept secret. Yes. Then and today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And today for the believer, the devil knows that when a Christian is endued, clothed, or put on that power from on high, he knows that now that Christian, that believer, becomes a threat to his kingdom. Mm. He becomes a threat to his yeah. kingdom uh, yeah. in influencing men and women. But not only that, uh, not only that, uh, when the Holy Spirit is moving and operating within our lives, uh, there comes a certain power. There comes a certain energy. Uh, there, come, there, there comes a certain confidence uh, in God. Uh, what is that confidence? Now we're going to get in Romans chapter 8. That confidence uh, where he says in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, uh, he says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, I was telling the brothers at our devotion, uh, I love Romans chapter 8. It's considered the victory chapter because, uh, and I'll walk you through the chapter a little bit as I can remember. He says uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, now this is the spirit operating in the individual. Uh, he says now in verse 1, now there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ. Uh, so as a Christian, as a believer, I don't have to walk around in condemnation. Uh, I don't have to walk around in guilt. Uh, the devil will tell you, you're guilty. You're condemned. Uh, God doesn't love you. God doesn't care about you. Wait a minute. Uh, there's a greater spirit in me uh, that says, uh, he bears witness with my spirit. Romans chapter 8. The Holy Spirit uh, bears witness with yeah. my spirit uh, that we are the children of God. Uh, that He loves us. Uh, that He cares about us. Uh, now therefore there's no condemnation uh, to them who are in God. Uh, it's the Holy Spirit uh, who does that. Amen. When I'm tired, when my body feels like it can't go any further, the Holy Spirit, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus said, the comforter. So the Holy Spirit, uh, yeah. and Paul knew this, uh, the Holy Spirit is the comforter. Uh, see, those people in Ephesus, uh, they were, they were going to go through trials just like you and I. Uh, yeah. They were going to go through battles. Uh, they battled depression. Yeah. They battled anxiety. They yeah. battled fears. Uh, and Paul knew that if you have the Spirit, He will comfort you. Uh, yeah. Jesus said, He is the comforter. Comforter. Yeah. He said, when the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, uh, he shall teach you all things, yeah. and he'll bring to your remembrance uh, yeah. whatsoever I have said. Uh, so when you are, your vision seems cloudy, uh, when the problems and the situations and the circumstances seems overwhelming, uh, we have that Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, who brings to our remembrance. Uh, there's no weapon formed against me. Uh, it's the Holy Spirit uh, who brings the Word of God to our remembrance. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, a peace that passes all understanding. Uh, the problem's still there. The circumstance yeah. hasn't gone away. Uh, but you know, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, I know, we know, all things uh, will work together yeah. for the good uh, to them who love God and them who are called according yeah. to his purpose. Uh, the devil doesn't want us to know that. Uh, the devil wants to keep that a secret. Yeah. Uh, the devil just wants you to come to church. Uh, the devil just wants you to give yourself a little bit to God. Uh, the devil wants you just to volunteer a little bit. Uh, he doesn't want the Holy Spirit, uh, the Spirit of God burning uh, in your heart and in your soul. He doesn't want that. When I'm tired, when I'm tired, and I see this, and we all experience this in the church, and I will deal with it on a ministerial level, we get, you get tired of, say, just coming and preaching just as a, as a man, as a person. Oh God, another day. Not that you don't love it. Not that you don't desire to do it. 
but your body is not in compliance with your mind. Amen. <laughs> right? For all the things that's been going on, and then you go, oh, wow. But in Romans chapter 8, this is why the devil, the Holy Spirit is the devil's best kept secret. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 8, and Jesus brings, the Holy Spirit brings it to our remembrance. Yes, yes. He says, the same Spirit, I believe it's verse 11, the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the grave. That same Spirit that caused resurrection to happen. Yes. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, I want to know Him and the power of His resurrection. It gives us hope as we share. It, it keeps that hope, that fire of hope burning in our hearts. It keeps the candle of hope lit in our lives. So yes. He said that same Spirit that rose Jesus from the grave shall quicken or make alive or revive your mortal body. Yes. So yes. the devil's best kept secret to when when you're feeling weak, I want you to give in to your flesh. But what Jesus says and through the Holy Spirit, don't give in to your flesh. Let the supernatural overcome the natural. Right. Let the yeah. supernatural quicken yes. and revive the yes. natural. Yes. But the devil wants you to say, stay in bed. Uh, uh, just lay down. Uh, don't do anything. Uh, or just do this. Or you deserve that. Uh, but the Holy Spirit says, uh, no, you can. Uh, and you shall uh, yes. do all things through yes. Christ. Uh, because I'll give you the strength. Uh, I am the power of God. Uh, I am the power uh, of Christ. Uh, yes. I am the Spirit of yes. God. Uh, the yes. Holy Spirit, He's the Spirit yes. of life. Uh, He's the spirit of adoption. Yes. Romans chapter 8. Yes. We weren't born into the family. He says, but we've been adopted uh -huh. into the family uh, by the spirit of God, by the spirit of adoption. Uh, yes. He's the spirit of supplication. Uh, when we don't know what to pray, how we should know what to pray, uh, he helps us. Uh, he leads us. Uh, he guides us. Uh, yes. He's the spirit of truth. Yes. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, he says, try every spirit to see whether they be true or not. Uh, who has helps us to distinguish, who helps us to discern. Uh, we hear this word discerning all the time, uh, but it's the spirit that helps me. Uh, this is the spirit of error, this is the spirit of truth. This is right, and this is wrong. Uh, the spirit of God, uh, he says, this is truth. Who's the truth? Jesus is the truth. Uh, yes. Jesus Christ is the truth. The yes. Holy Spirit confirms that in our mind, yes. in our hearts. He seals it. He gives us confidence. This is the truth. So Paul was asking them this question. He says, have you received the Holy Spirit? Mm. See, it wasn't just a, it was a loaded question. Yes. It was a question that they would need mm -hmm. as we read, and I'm going to get back to Romans chapter 8 in just a moment. But as we read in Ephesians, right? The book of Ephesians, the last chapter. The last chapter, the last, uh, from verse 10 on, he exclusively deals with what? What we know is spiritual warfare. Yes. Spiritual warfare. Yes. You see that? Yes. In that detail, you don't see that anywhere else in the Bible. No. But you have it in Ephesians. Yes. Because Acts chapter 19 shows us what was going on. Shows us the atmosphere. So Paul said, have you received the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Since you believe. Because there's all these other spirits already operating. So that's why Paul wrote to them later. And he says, put on the whole armor of God. That's right. He said, you're going to wrestle with flesh and principalities and powers yes. in high places yes. they're all around you yes. he says you need the holy yes. spirit you need the power of god all these other spirits are already around here yes. you need the holy spirit yes. you're following god you're loving god you're serving god now do something greater for god you need the spirit of god yes. he's going to keep that hope burning in your heart he's going to cause you to evangelize yes. he's going to cause you to reach out he's going to cause that he's going to cause the fire in your life yes. burn brighter yes. than the sorcerers right. than all that's going on in the world for we know all things work together for yes 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 and in Romans chapter 8, going back to it, he said in verse 26, 27, he says the Spirit, not only does Jesus make intercession for us, as we read in Hebrews, he says, but now when you don't know what to pray, as you should, he said the Spirit, 
will make intercession for you. He said not only will he comfort you, not only will he bring to your remembrance the word of God, not only will he teach you how to apply the word of God to your life, but he will also make intercession on your behalf. Yes, yes. He will pray for you yes. with utterings that cannot be uttered. Yes. He will help you. He will lead you. He will guide you. And the Bible tells us, uh, Paul was sharing with them, uh, you need the Spirit of God. Uh, all these spirits that are operating, uh, you need that Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit uh, in your life, in your soul, in your mind. When you go to Jesus, go through the power of the Spirit. Say, well, I can just go right to Jesus. Well, look, look at the hierarchy. The Father sent the Son. The Son died on the cross. The Son rose again. The Bible tells us, I read, I uh, mentioned it to you, Romans chapter 8. The Father dispatched the Spirit, yes. and the Spirit went down into the depths. Right? Yes. Of the earth. Yes. Pull them out, the Bible says in Psalm 16. I will not suffer my Holy One to see corruption. And he said, I believe it's Psalm 24. Where shall I go from thy spirit? If I go into hell, thou art there. He said, wherever I go, your spirit is there. The spirit is so powerful. He pulled Jesus out of there. We know Jesus was in hell because in 1 Peter, Jesus says, he went down there and he was preaching to the spirits. He was, what was he telling those spirits? See, again, the spirits, those angels that have fallen with Lucifer. Jesus was reminding them that when Lucifer tried to overthrow God, how that uh, God was still on the throne. Uh, he was letting them know uh, you guys are going to stay down here but I in, th in 72 hours uh, in 3 days uh, I'm going to be delivered. Uh, he was letting them know God is still in control uh, and the Holy Spirit lets us know uh, that God is still in control. Uh, not the situation uh, not the circumstance uh, not the problem. Uh, God is still in control uh, but the devil doesn't want you to know that. Uh, the devil wants it to be a secret the devil wants you to believe uh, that God is defeated, that you're defeated, uh, but that's his best kept secret to the church. Amen. To the church. So he said in Romans chapter 8, 26, 27, the Spirit makes intercession for us. For we know all things work together for the good. Amen. 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? Yes. Sunday school in verse 32. He said, listen folks. God who spared not his son. But he delivered him up for us all. By him and through him. Shall he freely give us all things. So then he goes on as he's starting to conclude. Paul says in so many words. What shall separate me from the love of God? Shall pearl? Shall circumstances, shall shipwreck, shall problems, shall financial problems, shall this, shall it separate me from the love of God? The devil would say, stop coming to church. Those spirits, the, the spirit of deception, that lying spirit will say, God doesn't love you because they would pray for you. He doesn't tell you that they are. <laughs> If God be for us, who can be against us? Paul said, and as we look at the narrative there, he said, all these external things shall not separate me from the love of God. Amen. Love God. For we are more than conquerors yes. through him who loved us. He loved us. Let's go back to Sunday school. How do I know he loved me? Through his goodness? Through his forbearance? He suffered long with me. So when the devil says he doesn't love you, he doesn't care about you, the church is not following up on you, he, the devil never tells us what we need to do. <laughs> 
They not going, you won't you call someone? <laughs> but it's a secret. And all these other spirits come, these antichrist spirits, and they just build on that negativity. They build on the negativity. That's right. Watch, when you go back to church and sit back there by yourself, nobody's going to talk to you. <laughs> because you came in, sat back there by yourself, because you're still listening to those other spirits. The Bible says, the Holy Spirit says, he who had friends must show himself friends. That's right. Amen. So the Holy Spirit brings that. Go show yourself friends. That's right. Leave your problems outside. Yes, amen. Come in and receive what God has for you. Amen. The devil has a secret. Wow. It's called the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit enables us, equips us, empowers us amen. to go, Pastor mentioned. This coming year, Let's do more. That's right. Do more for God. Mm -hmm. Immediately in the mind. Well, what more can I do? Hmm. I don't really know how much more I can do. Hmm. Lean on the Spirit, and He'll show you. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We've never done enough. I can't do enough. And even when I don't know what else to do, Holy Spirit, how can I be? Can I contribute? Mm -hmm. What else within my capacity, within you enabling me, I want change your prayer. I want to contribute more. Open the door. Mm -hmm. Equip me. Yes. Enable me. Yes. Not just to come to church. Mm -hmm. Not just to do what I'm doing. Help me to build on that. Yes, 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 Lord. Help me to build greater impact yes, Lord. for my Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And help me to do it with all of my heart. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. I can do more. I believe mm -hmm. in God. And as a result of believing in God, I believe in myself. Yes. What God is doing in me. Yes. Be confident. Mm -hmm. Right? Philippians 1. In this very thing. He who has started a good work yes, sir. will do what? Continue it. Mm -hmm. Continue it. That's right. Continue. Getting better. Good is good, right? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, good robs us of the better. Mm. <laughs> Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says Daniel had a and excellent spirit. Mm. What does that mean? The word excel, it means it's getting better, uh -huh. better. it's excelling. Yes. It's continual. Yes. It doesn't stop at 2019. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? It's getting better day to day. Event, event. Mm -hmm. Situation, situation. I'm believing God more today than I did last week. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. I have an excellent spirit. Where does that come from? The Holy Spirit. That's right. His spirit bears witness with our spirit. His spirit helps our spirit excel for Jesus. The devil doesn't want us to excel. No. He doesn't want us to get better. We hear the language, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I said, I'm better That's in right. God. Yes. I'm good with people out yes. there. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm excelling. That's right. We can do that. That's right. So the devil's best kept secret. Don't listen to him. That which he wants to keep a secret, God has revealed in his word. Mm -hmm. Remember, we've been created right in the beginning of the book. That's right. Chapter 1, mm -hmm. we've been created in His image. That's right. In His likeness. Yes. Can't get any better now. Mm -hmm. You can become a doctor. 
You can become, you can achieve all these things in the world. Can't get any better than Genesis 1.26. Amen. Creating his image in his likeness. Amen. That's as good as it gets. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. And we just get better in God. Yes. Praise God. But it's the devil's secret mm -hmm. to say us, no. Settle for where you are. Let that be acceptable. Mm -hmm. It may be acceptable, but I got a lot more in me. Come on, come on. It's Pastor was sharing. I got a lot more ideas. Yes. Express them. Yes. And the devil says, well, they're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so why even say it? Come on, I'm human. That's right. Come on, human. I don't know, but I don't think it's that smart. <coughs> I don't know. So when we go for that reasoning, we must ask ourselves whether it's implemented or not. If I got this thought to do something for God, it didn't come from the devil. Other people may seem think it's foolish, but if it's to do something for God, it didn't come from the devil. Come on now. I'm going to excel. I'm going to get better. That's right. But it's his secret. It's his secret to say, ah, you don't got that much longer to go. This is, this is where, where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> I told people in school, your instructors are teaching. They had to go through it before they can teach you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They had to finish. Yes. They went through the same process. Right. I can I will. That's right. I shall. Through Christ. That's right. Through Christ. Through Christ. That's the devil's secret. No, you can't. No, you won't. Don't try. As those disciples in Ephesus that close here, they said, We have so much as heard. But now that we've heard, we want that. I'm sure glad you told me. <laughs> I remember, and even now, Joe was asking a question. She's a little sick today. She goes, what are you preaching? I said, oh, I told you yesterday. <clears throat> so we are talking, and I said, well, I said it that way. She said, I said, well, I prepared, and I have this written on like four or five pages. I said, but, you know, it's the same title, but you can go different directions with it. So I'm letting God just kind of lead me on which particular scriptures to share. Because I don't want to just do the same thing. Because right. it's different people. That's right. Amen. It's the same message, mm -hmm. but it's delivered different. A little bit of different content. Mm -hmm. Because it's different people. Mm -hmm. And I'm different right. from right. the last time. Okay. In different circumstances. So as I was doing Sunday school and I was doing this, I was doing both of them at the same time, getting confused. <laughs> I was working on a PowerPoint writing this, and I was like, eh. but I had it all up here. I just wanted to get it on paper to keep me on track. But I said, it's in there, so I can just pull them and allow the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes the devil will say, stick to this. Stick to that only. Doesn't matter what Shannon's going through in her life or what Sister Pam's going through in her life. You stick to what you put down. You put down. Mm -hmm. Because you thought this is what they need. <laughs> <laughs> but the Spirit knows. Uh -huh. So his secret to the preacher is stick to what you feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Where you're familiar and to the Christian. But the Holy Spirit says, trust me. That's right. I'll lead you. That's right. I'll guide you. Amen. What are my prayers? This time I'm really going to close. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's only been four minutes. <laughs> I think. <laughs> One of my prayers as a minister in preaching and teaching or just talking to someone is, Lord, 
I have prepared the table. Talk about myself. As much as possible for this particular, I believe I've prepared to whatever degree. The people are going to come and they're going to pull up to the table. Mm -hmm. But you have to feed them. Yes. I can prepare the food. Mm -hmm. The people have to come and pull up to the table. But God has to make the food good. Yes. 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 <laughs> right? Yes. A lot of chefs get upset because you don't like their food. <laughs> they, I prepared and this is good for everyone. Don't you dare put ketchup on my steak. Yes. They prepared it the way that they like it, not the way Sister Promise yeah. likes it. Yes. Yes. Come on now. So I can prepare the way I like it, put it on there and you're like, <laughs> you need to more seasoned salt on this. This is bad. But if I pray, God, you make it good. Mm -hmm. Or you know what she has me done. You know what she has me yes, done. Yes, yes, yes. You make it food for his soul. Mm -hmm. Soul food. Yes. To where that he'll digest it. She'll digest it. Mm -hmm. They'll remember. Yes. It'll build. <laughs> It'll stick. <laughs> and he doesn't. But the devil says, no, stick with your spirit. But his secret is deception. Yes, all the time. But we have the Holy Spirit, folks. I love the church. Yes. We have the Spirit of God. Yes, we do. Who helps us in our lives. Yes. To live for him. Yes. To serve him. Yes. To be a part. To contribute mm -hmm. to the church. That's to right. the family of God. Yes. We have the spirit yes. of God helping us. Mm. Amen. To do it day after day. Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. To not get discouraged out there. Yes. Or when it comes to cast it aside and well. say, no, Jesus is still on the throne. That's right. Everything's going to work together. I am more than a conqueror. Right. If God be for me, who can be against me? Right. I've been adopted into the family yes. of God. Yes. Now there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ. Yes. No. We have the Spirit. Yes. And He doesn't want people to know about the Spirit. He doesn't want people to know. But it's the Spirit that keeps us spiritually enthusiastic. Yes, yes. About God. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 That's it.